and let's go to table. So that's one function we will need. Let's get another one. This one, we're going to be accessing it in object mode. So no need for a static. So I'm going to say function. Let's use where like so. And then I'm going to need another one, public function. Um, there's where, there's uh, select. Mm -hmm. So for now, since we are just reading from the database, I think I'll leave select there, but we will need one for update as well. Function update like so. Okay. And then I want a protected one here that will actually read protected function. I'll call this one run like so. All right. Mm -hmm. And what's the other one? Okay, so I'll leave the protected ones over here and then I will create a uh, public function again. This one I'll just call it O just to get everything like that. All right, so, so far so good. We will put comments uh, once we are sure what these things are actually doing. So to start with, I want to create a connection to the database. So we already have the database details in the init file, which is this one. So there's DB host, user, and so on. So let's create a connection. So we're going to do a connection right here where it says table. And then table will receive a value called table right there. Okay, so table. All right, so let's create a static table here as well so we can be able to access it. Let me come back here. Now, the reason why I'm putting these is so that when I capture this, I can save it there before I read from another function. That way I can have access to it from there. So here, what I will do is start with self, okay? Self con so that we can do an, an actual connection self con i have to do it like that uh, as usual like i said since we are using this thing in a chain we have to be able to return the instance so i'm going to say self instance that's what we will return so i'll do that okay just in case i may forget so let's make a connection. Here to make a connection, I want to use a try catch block. Okay, so we use the try catch whenever you have a piece of code that you uh, that you think you may get an error on. So you do something like try and then you say catch like so. Oop. I am getting confused so you try and then you catch here it has to be an exception like so but we need a very specific exception here because we are doing PDO that's what we are using PDO like that and then let's set it to this value so here we are telling it that we want a PDO exception in this variable so this is just type type hinting, which you could have done something like this string. But in this case, we want to catch a PDO exception. Okay, so once we catch that, then we are going to get a message and we read that message from uh, a function called get message like so. This is just how PDO is like. And then I'm just going to say die but I need to actually echo this so that I will be able to see it. Okay, so in the try version, this is this part is where you add your actual code. And then if at any point the code creates an error, you're going to see it here as a message. So it will stop running whatever it was running here and skip to this part and show the error message. All right, so here I want to set 
my PDO to just a PDO object like that. And then I'm going to say uh, is equal to new PDO. Now, I can connect to the database using MySQLi, but instead I'm using PDO. And the reason is that I want to use prepared statements to avoid uh, the, this issue of SQLi injection for security reasons. And it's not that I need PDO to do the prepared statements. It's just that it works better with PDO. But prepared statements can be done without the use of PDO. But since PDO is object-oriented, and this is an object-oriented tutorial, I prefer to do it that way. So let's create a connection string to our database. So I'm just going to name it string is equal to now the first thing you must do is write the driver of your which is my sql in this case put a full colon and then you you give it your host which in our case is localhost but uh, we are going to use these guys right here that's what i want to use there so i'm going to copy that db host and I'm just going to add it to the string like so. Put a dot again. Now, before I do this, uh, let me show you what the string is supposed to look like without those things, because those things can get a little confusing. So I'm going to say localhost like this and put a semicolon and just say db name like that, and then give my give the da database name. Now, you can do the connection without actually giving the DB name like that. And then you can later create a query to actually, um, you can run a query to select the database. And that query is something like uh, use something like this. So usually a query is something like uh, select all from users. When you are, you, you are trying to run a query where you select all the records from a table, I missed a star there. So this is a query to read from the table, but you can use a query to use a specific database by just saying use, and then you write your database name there, like so. So use that, and then you run that as a query. That's how you shift from one database to another. So if you don't specify the database here, you can always do it during the query process. So I'm going to say DB name here. We're just going to provide the database name. And I said we're going to call it OOP, OOP underscore DB, like so. And then in here, I'm going to put that string there, like that. And then I will put a comma, not a semicolon, a comma there, and put DB user, and then put DB password, like so. Okay, now I want to replace these with these values so that we don't have to come here to change this whenever we change our web, our database. We just go to the init file and change it from here. It's much cleaner that way. So let's get the DB host from there and replace localhost with that. So I'm just going to delete localhost, put quotes like that, two dots to concatenate and put that in the middle. I am going to do the same for the DB name. I'm just going to connect it to the end with a dot. But this is going to be DB name like that. Okay, great. Right then, so now that we have this, we do have a connection. So I just want to save this connection into this connection right there so that it can be accessible later. So I'm going to copy that and then put it here and say self double oops con like that. So I'm saving this inside uh, inside there. Okay. So I'm going to have an inst instance and then I'm also going to have a connection. So let me save that there. But it's not a good idea to have to connect every time that we want to read from the database. So instead, I want to be able to connect only once. So 
I will have to ask the question if self con like this, if not, meaning it's not set. So let me put an if statement here, like so. And then I'm just going to say, if the connection isn't on yet, then make that connection. So I will do that. Oops, let me do it here. And then I will put everything inside there. Move this try catch block in there. Okay, so if it's not set, then let's set it. We're going to set it through there. All right. But then before we do all this, let's create an instance, shall we? So we're going to do the instancing right here and also say if self instance like that. So we're doing exactly the same thing. If the instance isn't saved or created, then create it. So uh, we're going to create the instance here by saying uh, self instance. Oops. Is equal to new self, like so. So if you look at this, it's kind of the same as saying um, something like uh, db is equal to new db, like that, in this case. So this is the part we're trying to avoid. So we're doing it from inside the class itself. So db, uh, this is the variable, right? Is equal to new db. So it's the same as this. This is the variable, which is right there. So that's equal to db. And then we say is equal to new, which is that. And then db. So we are calling db from inside the class. That's why we are using self. So let me remove that. So if it's not set, set it. Once it's set, then we return this. Now, the reason we have to return instance, this instance, this new instance we've created is because we want to do the chaining as mentioned earlier. And in order to do that, you have to return the class from a function in order to be able to hook it to another function. Okay, so, so far what we are doing here, just to recap, is that we are getting a table name here, so which we haven't utilized. So I'm going to do that just now. And I would do that by saying, uh, because the instance would have been created by now. So that's the, oh, actually the table is static as well. So let's do that. So I'm just going to say self table is equal to table. Okay. So we are setting the table here to that. So whatever table is supplied by the user, we're going to put it right there. So the reason we are saving these things is because the actual querying is going to happen in other functions down here. And we want to be able to access those values from the top here when we need them. Okay, great. So let me come down to wait table. I think some of these can actually be, some of these might not need to be static, but let's leave them just like that. We'll reduce the static. It's not, it's usually a good idea to keep the static stuff to a minimum. So wherever we see that it can work without being static, we're going to change it from static to dynamic to object mode. Okay, so, so far what we have done here in this function is every time we call table, and we supply a table, all we are doing is returning an instance of db. So let's give it a try and see what will happen when we do call table, just to confirm that things are working up to this point, right? Okay, so now the problem is obviously, we don't have a database yet. We only have these variables there. So it's time to create an actual database, which we'll be reading from and add some data. So we'll do.